Hey, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to our Tuesday Lunch Hour Live. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, I am joined by the amazing Minerva Maharaj. Minerva, I love saying your name, just so you know. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Minerva is a very good friend of mine. She is also a uh, spiritual life coach, and she is also our branch director in the Pickering branch. And today we're going to have a really important conversation. And, you know, Minerva and I have been chatting just about, uh, hold on, I want to make sure that your name is shown here, the name that I love. Um, <laughs> uh, Minerva and I have been chatting about the importance of focusing on abundance uh, right now in this time. And uh, we've been, you know, just discussing how we can help each other attract more abundance and how to be in abundance. And so before we jump into that conversation, which I know it's going to be a juicy one, I'm going to let Minerva uh, share a little bit about herself and um, yeah, what, what you do, my lovely girl. Thank you. So what do I do? I do a lot of things. I am a certified spiritual coach, Reiki practitioner, access bars practitioner. And what I do is I help women going through a spiritual awakening. They may not realize it, but it hits a point where they are ready for more in their career, in their finances and their relationships and really within themselves where they kind of feel like they're in this shell or casing that they're ready to break out and just hit the next level. And I do that through spiritual life coaching and powerful energy tools and practical life tools to help them break through to the next level. Um, and I do private coaching online as well as in person, but right now, obviously just keeping it online. And I do a retreat called Eat, Meditate, Love. Um, and yeah, that's in a nutshell what I do. I love it. I love it. You are amazing and you bring so much joy and love to this world. So thank you so much uh, for thank everything you. you do. And um, I just, I'm just making sure that we're live on online here and also I can okay. see people's comments there. So um, forgive me if I'm looking down at my phone. Um, okay. But so yeah, so let's talk about abundance. Let's talk about um, first of all, let's talk about where we are right now and why it's so important to be attracting abundance for ourselves. Yes, um, because especially the time that we're in right now, it's there's a lot of fear that we're experiencing. And yes, it's real fear. Um, but at some point, we need to switch out of that. And I just literally posted something on my Instagram today about from Abraham Hicks. Are we adding to the momentum of solution or problems? So basically, in other words, what that means, are we choosing to view things from a place of love or fear or lack or abundance? And right. um, basically, that's what it comes down to. And it's a moment by moment choice. And you can choose right here, right now, what are what momentum are you going to contribute towards? Um, and so, yeah, the fear is real, and um, but you can choose to shift out of it. And at some point, in order to move forward in what we're going through right now, we need to start contributing to the solution. We need to start contributing to love. We need to start contributing to abundance. And there's different ways we're going to do that. We need to do that, first of all, in our mindset, in our energy, and in our actions, and how we are going to uh, contribute to... Uh, you know, what platform are we going to stand on vibrationally? Therefore, it'll affect the way we feel. Therefore, it'll, it'll affect our actions and our behaviors, um, how we take care of our families and how we contribute back to the community, how we contribute to the economy. Yeah. Is that making sense? For sure. Absolutely. You know, because I guess one of the biggest things that I'm seeing, and it's such a natural place for people to go to, right? Where, um, and it's, so it's funny because I say that word natural um, in a way of like it's what we have grown to be accustomed to, right? So yeah. we're like we're just in scarcity mode and and feeling like well we have to like tighten up the bootstraps and not spend a cent and you know we're looking at like our bank accounts and savings and all of this and figuring stuff out and but I mean like that is keeping people so stuck in a place of fear, yeah. right? And and so. Um, this is why I think it's so important to have this conversation because not only is it, you know, obviously to keep the economy going, right? We need to continue supporting each other, but it's also for our own energy around this and for what we are manifesting. And one of the things I know we've talked about before is the fact that we're always manifesting. Mm -hmm. We're like, 
we can be manifesting good and we can be manifesting not good, but we're always manifesting, right? Yes, yes. So to add on your point there about, um, you said something about, is the default, right? So our default tends to be fear-based. And that's why I talk about COVID-19 being a time of consciousness, rising yeah. into consciousness, the awakening, uh, because this is going to show you all that stuff. It's going to stir up a lot of the unconscious and a lot of fear. Um, and that tends to be the default because that's what it's being fed in, in every direction uh, through social media, through media, through conversations, through. And although it's real and we're not saying don't be informed um, and don't take the right steps and precautions, at some point, though, we that's what we need. If you're on that vibration of fear, if that's a platform that you're on, um, by the way, the more that we absorb all of that information, absorb those thoughts and beliefs and the energies uh, that's based on fear, that's going to become our default. And that's why we d default to that. But at what point are you going to start breaking that so that your default is now love versus fear? Mm -hmm. And people are saying, yes, yes, yes. So yes, yeah. it's just speaking. Um, so to eat, just switch it, like to make it practical for people when we talk about love and fear is take a look at your thoughts right now. What are you thinking right now? What's the energy underneath that? Or how is it making you feel these thoughts? Low or heavy? Oh, sorry, heavy or light? Low vibration or high vibration? It's easy to just pick apart what that is. And, you know, how does it make you feel? Heavy. So anything that's heavy is fearful. It's fear-based. Anything that feels light is love-based, right? To give an example of this, um, in terms of the decisions that you make. So the gym that I'm a part of, it's a kickboxing gym here in Pickering. I love kickboxing. And um, they sent out an email asking, and it was just very honest and to the heart, and asking that if you can, can you please not cancel your memberships at this time? Because we still have rent, we still have salaries to pay, and we want to still serve our community. And yeah. to be honest, the first, the initially earliest week, I was like, do I, where do I, should I cancel my membership? And my instinct was right away when they said that, I choose, okay, what was my decision based on? Is it based on fear and lack that I don't have? Or am I going to make this decision from abundance that I do have? And it felt lighter and it felt so much better. I'm like, I'm going to continue paying this membership. Also too, because they treated me so well when I had my, I sprained my ankle and I was out for six months and they put my membership on hold, which normally that's not something you're supposed to do unless it's like a life threatening situation or you're moving or whatever. So that's yeah. just an example of like in that moment, I decided how am I going to make this, what am I making this decision from? Is this, I'm going to, going to make it from a place of lack and I don't have, or am I going to base it from a place of abundance? And when I chose abundance, it just felt so much lighter and more aligned to who I am and the truth. And that's what we need. That's the momentum I want to contribute to. And the more I do that, the more I'm going to see that flourish in my life. And then that will start feeding off into my family, to the community and outward and outward versus contributing down the path of lack and fear. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that we are having this conversation today because this is exactly it, right? And I feel like where you came from in that place was a place of giving and in, and in a place of wanting to um, support those around you and support the community. And when it comes from that place, like you were talking about the light and the heavy or the light and the dark and this like that is such a, a you know, a place of light that that was coming mm -hmm. from. So thank you for sharing that. And yeah. That, that's amazing. Um, so what would you say, you know, to those who, and I'm sure that this is a question in people's minds, right? Well, you know, um, I've just had like a halt to my own income. So how can I, like, it doesn't reasonably make sense to be, um, you know, and I mean, we can go beyond money when it comes to abundance, but um, what would we, what would we say to those people that are, are just feeling like a complete sense of lack and actually have not been able to have money come in? Like, yeah, no, that's definitely real. So there's a few things you can do is I think number one is shifting, really sitting with it, being with those thoughts, being with those feelings, bringing awareness to it, and then gradually shift that. And there's different things you can do. One of those things is, um, I think we talked about this in our webinar in the Wellpreneur Club, um, go for the next best feeling thought. Go reach for the next feeling thought. 
best feeling thoughts. Um, and, and in that, like, again, it's an, it's a choice. Like, are you going to look at it as, oh my God, my life is over. There's no money. There's no lack. I'll never get money again. Or can you shift it? How can you shift it gradually? And how can you reach for a thought that feels lighter? Maybe there's an opportunity in this. What is it that I'm not seeing? What can come from this? What more? And even staying in the question, if you don't need to know the answer to it, but staying in the question will then realign you, shift you from a place of lack and fear to a place of, um, love, and I know we keep saying the word love, but in, to use in other words, shift us back into the place of who we are. And that's an infinite being and connecting to that and shifting to that lightness because you're not going to find a solution by being in the dark. You're not going to find a solution by being in the lack and being the fear. So it's a choice. You can continue going down. I'm going to worry. I'm going to look at my finances and and you know, go down that road, and there's no getting out of that. There's gonna be no solution in that road. But if you choose to climb the emotional scale, um, what is the next best reaching thought that you can grab onto? And start, you'll start mm -hmm. feeling that shift and lightness. And when you do, that's the truth, and that's the momentum that you wanna, that's the path you want to go down and continue on that momentum. Right, right. And and so I just want to throw this out there that if anyone has questions, we have comments coming through. So true. We're in this together. Yes, yes, yes. So if anyone has questions that you want to ask um, while we have Minerva here, please do. Um, but Minerva, I love this because what you're talking about is not is not like, you know, people might be watching or hearing this and thinking, um, yeah, but I've got like real, right? So we're, 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 I think accustomed to really say, yeah, but me, but my situation is different. And what I love about what you're talking about is that it's actually scientifically proven. The mm -hmm. energy that we approach life with, that we approach our thoughts with, that we download every day and move forward in life with affects like completely scientifically affects everything that happens in our lives right mm -hmm. so it's not airy fairy um it's not you know we're not talking out of our butts here yeah. <laughs> we are we are really we are really sharing how uh this is done and how this is possible and yeah. uh, you know i'll share my experience because i and i know that you can share yours too but for happy healthy women like we have not just halted in business right like things are continuing to flow and I continue to um, move things forward and share and, and give um, and things continue to uh, keep coming through for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I don't know, Minerva, like I'm sure the same is happening with you as well. Yeah. I, I actually wanted to share when you're talking about there is scientific evidence and as much as I'm so grateful for that, but we have evidence within ourselves. And my evidence is that money has actually been something I struggled with for all my life, most of my life. And it was something I was consciously working on, working on for years and years and years. And I felt the biggest shift that I experienced in the last six, seven months, which now has just the work I have done around that and really what shifted it financially for me, me hitting the next level in my finances, in my uh, business, in my career overall, I see it transforming is because I started getting out uh, and not just doing what I'm told to do. And um, it, yes, it's the practical things as well in terms of finances, but the biggest shift I really feel was me breaking open energetically and reconnecting to that abundant, infinite self. And there's different ways you can do that through meditation and journaling and coaches. And But I really did the work to break through those limitations and really break through the fear ground that I was standing on and shift towards that. And because of that, have how I changed um, what I experienced energetically and spiritually and obviously in my mindset and my habits, um, just the energy around that, I was able to shift so much. And that's why I'm not too worried about this time. Um, I may have to do things a little differently in terms of seeing clients in person, but I heard something this week that really resonated with me. You, it, you need to align with the people who are not worrying about money. There's people out there who have saved, 
who, who believe they're still abundant and they're not choosing to stand on that platform of fear. And the sooner you can stand genuinely stand on that platform of abundance and of love and stay on that vibration, you're going to emit that energy like a beacon. And those quote unquote, those people are going to come and be attracted to you. And because I chose to be in a place of love and versus fear and, and serve and support these opportunities, great opportunities have been coming to me as well as people booking my intro sessions. And I literally felt that within a day and it takes cleaning up, right? Like I get there and then I drop, I get there and I drop. And it's, it's part of the human experience. But I, every time I shift and I clear energetically, something shows up physically, either a new booking, a new client, a new opportunity, whatever. So it's work that you can do. This is scientifically based. This is like experience based. You know this. Um, not just spiritual teachers know this. Everyone knows that. And even if you are attracting lack right now in, in terms of quote unquote, no clients, um, loss of a job, loss of income, it is aligning to the platform that you're on. And it's time to wake up and, and break that ground that you've been standing on. So it's a wake up call and it's serving you and it's, it's working out for you right now. And you just get to choose whether you can continue on that platform or one of love. Oh, oh my gosh. This is so, so powerful and I love it. And I just like, you're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom with us. Minerva, how do people um, get more of you? Because everyone needs us right now. <laughs> how do you get more of me? So um, there's so many ways we could uh, connect on Instagram and Facebook. I'm doing a meditation and mindfulness moment right now. I did it for the last week, um, inspired by COVID-19 to help people shift and be light and be on that platform and connect to that infinite being that they are. And so the videos are still on those platforms. And I think I'm going to continue this because I'm getting such great feedback. Um, and then there's my site, goddessofwisdom.ca, if you want to connect. Love it. So I'm just going to throw that up there, goddessofwisdom.ca, and they can find your Instagram uh, and your Facebook through there, or you can just connect with Minerva right here uh, on Facebook. And Minerva, like I said, is one of the leaders in our collective. She just did an incredible webinar uh, in our Wellpreneur Club. So for those of you who are needing that sense of community and still want to be learning and growing, Join our Wellpreneur Club. Like, it's freaking amazing. And we yeah. have incredible uh, leaders like Minerva sharing her knowledge and expertise. So, thank you. Thank you so much, girl. I am so honored to have you in this collective and learn and grow with you uh, on a constant basis. Oh. Um, and for those of you who are out there and you, you know, are looking to promote and be a part of something bigger than you right now and give and serve, this is a great way. Step into leadership with mm -hmm. us, become a trailblazer, become a branch director. You know, our company hasn't stopped because we uh, can't get together in person. Online is totally where it's at and we're loving it. So join us. Beautiful. Thank you, Nat. And thank you for everything you do for our community and the world. We love you. Thanks, girl. Love you so much too. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. And bye, my love. We'll talk soon. See ya. Take care. Bye.